Hi my name is Penny and welcome to another Top 5 Wednesday video. Top 5 Wednesday is a Goodreads group which I will leave the link to down below. Basically every week we have a prompt to talk about your top 5 bookish things within a particular category. This week the prompt is the top 5 children's books that are worth a reread as an adult. So I'm going to be honest, I only have 4 books here because I really wanted to focus on children's children's book, not middle grade books. And then I could only really think of four things that are honestly worth a reread as an adult. And I don't want to stick something in there just for being silly. So we'll start with number four. So number four that I'm going to talk about possibly doesn't fit into my own description of children's children's book. But it kind of does. So that is Rove Random by J.R.R. Tolkien. To be honest, I'm not a great Tolkien fan. Like Lord of the Rings is okay, but I found reading it so much of a struggle. I did enjoy The Hobbit. The Silmarillion was just oh, tiring. So I guess I just, I don't really buy into Tolkien's general mythology. It doesn't excite me like it excites some other people. That's cool. Other people can go and enjoy it. What I do really like of Tolkien's is Roverandom. So Roverandom is a story that he wrote when one of his sons, they were away at the seaside, his son bought this little dog toy and then lost it on the beach. So Tolkien wrote this story about a real life dog who annoyed a wizard, got turned into a toy, bought by a little boy, went to the beach, met a sand wizard, got turned into a real dog again, went to the moon, met the moon dog, went to the ocean, met the sea dog, went on all these adventures and he basically told the story to his son to cheer his son up about losing his little toy dog. It's like the greatest reason ever to write a story. And I haven't read it for a little while and I really want to read it again and this prompt has really reminded me of that. So if you haven't read Verandum and you like Tolkien stuff, you should definitely read it. If you don't like Tolkien stuff, then you should still read it. It's a really fun little story. Alright, so then number three I'm going to talk about is The Eleventh Hour. So this is basically a picture book. Oh, my notes are falling out. This is the kind of book where you get notes. So this book follows um, this elephant called Horace and he has a birthday party. Uh, and basically in the beginning they show you there's this amazing feast and then right near the end they come back and the fe feast is gone. And basically you then need to go back through the story and try to find all the clues and work out who stole the feast. Um, and there's also a whole bunch of other like problems to work out like what is everyone's names. And then there's also a whole bunch of hidden mice through it. Basically... There are just so many puzzles and cool things to work out and so many hidden features in this book that as a child it was maybe a little bit overwhelming but as an adult um, I think it's probably even a little bit easy but that easiness makes it even more fun because you're like oh, look how good I am at solving these puzzles. So if you haven't read The 11th Hour I would definitely say that it is worth a go. And if you have children who are maybe not really young, but maybe like 10-ish or something, they would probably really enjoy some of the puzzles, especially if you help them with it and work through it with them. So the next book that I have on my shelves um, that's a children's book is Katundra, which is by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. So this book is really... When I read it again as an adult, I was like, oh my god, I don't, did not remember what this is about. It basically follows this cat who has an eating disorder. Um, it starts out, she's really fat and everyone like laughs at her, like all the other animals are teasing her. And she tries to lose weight, but she just can't. And she, she feels miserable all the time. And then eventually she meets this mouse. She tries to kill him, but she can't because she's too fat. Um, to catch him. She meets this mouse and he kind of encourages her to eat more healthily. There's this most ridiculous page of this cat eating like vegetables like what. Um, but anyway he basically encourages her to eat more healthily and to exercise more for fun um, and helps her become happy. I don't know it's such a weird children's story at the time, I never really 
I think I understood it. You kind of, there's like this page where she's like, after everyone's been calling her name, she goes away and she like binges on all this like unhealthy food to try and cheer herself up. I just, I think when I reread this as an adult, I ended up crying because I think even though it's a story about a cat with an eating disorder, it does um, explain what it's like quite well. So Katandra with a read, if that's something that would interest you. So the last book I read is actually one that I bought because I went to the bookstore after I saw this prompt and I was like, what children's books are there that are worth a reread? I'll have a look at the shelves and see what I can find. And I found this and this is a book that is pretty much in every primary school in New Zealand. And I grew up on these stories. I think whenever I think back to Maori mythology, these are the stories that I think of. Um, basically, it's these Maui and other Maori legends by Peter Gossage. The one that really stuck with me as a kid is the one about how Maui slowed the sun. So this picture, this, these pictures, and this one especially are like ones that I've really remembered since I was a child. There's also some other really cool pictures like this picture of Mahueka or this one of Maui with all his like bird friends. I don't know I just think if you are someone who watched Moana and would be interested in learning more about Maui there's a whole bunch of stories in here. There is like how Maui found his mother, how Maui found his father in the magic jawbone, the fish of Maui, how Maui slowed the sun, how Maui found the secret of fire, how Maui defied the goddess of death. There's just a bunch of really cool uh, stories about Maui and I'm really, I bought this just the other day, I haven't reread it, but I'm really excited to reread all these myths and just enjoy reliving my childhood while also learning something about a different culture that's kind of my culture because I'm part Maori, part like a tiny bit. I don't look at it. So those are my top four, not five, top four books, uh, children's books that are worth a reread as an adult. I'd love to know if you think there's any other children's books that are worth a reread as an adult, especially since I couldn't even think of five. Also, I hope that you're reading lots of cool things and I will see you next time.